Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about a trade war that is now brewing between the USA, China, Canada, and Mexico. So basically the USA's three biggest trading partners. And the reason this trade war has now kicked off is because Donald Trump, who doesn't actually take over as the president until the 20th of January, 2025, has posted onto his Truth social media site, which is basically his private version of X that he uses to make all of his announcements, saying that he believes that the fentanyl crisis in the USA is a direct consequence of both China producing the drug and Mexico and Canada allowing people to bring it into the USA. So let's have a look at the posts and see what Donald Trump has actually said. In the post released on the 25th of November, he said, As everyone is aware, thousands of people are pouring through Mexico and Canada, bringing crime and drugs at levels never seen before. Right now, a caravan coming from Mexico, composed of thousands of people, seems to be unstoppable in its quest to come through our currently open border. On January the 20th, as one of my many first executive orders, I will sign all necessary documents to charge Mexico and Canada a 25% tariff on all products coming into the United States and its ridiculous open borders. This tariff will remain in effect until such time as drugs, in particular fentanyl, and all illegal aliens stop this invasion of our country. Both Mexico and Canada have the absolute right and power to easily solve this long simmering problem. We hereby demand that they use this power and until such time that they do, it is time for them to pay a very big price. On the same day, he also posted about China saying, I have had many talks with China about the massive amounts of drugs, in particular fentanyl, being sent into the United States, but to no avail. Representatives of China told me that they would institute their maximum penalty, that of death, for any drug dealers caught doing this, but unfortunately they never followed through, and drugs are pouring into our country, mostly through Mexico, at levels never seen before. Until such time as they stop, we will be charging China an additional 10% tariff above any additional tariffs on all of their many products coming into the United States of America. Now these posts took the financial markets by surprise. And we've seen stock markets all around the world actually falling as a result of them, mainly because everybody is now expecting a trade war to kick off because if the USA does apply a 25% tariff against Canada and Mexico and an additional 10% tariff against Chinese goods, that's on top of the existing tariffs that are already in place for some of the Chinese products, such as electric vehicles, where there is a 100% tariff. So if Donald Trump follows through on this, he'll be applying a 110% tariff on all Chinese electric vehicles. If that happens, it's likely that Mexico, Canada and China will retaliate. They will introduce tariffs on USA imports into their countries. And what this will do is firstly damage global trade, but also damage the economies of all of these countries involved. Fentanyl is a synthetic or man-made opioid that was first created in the 1960s as an anaesthetic. So it's similar in terms of properties to heroin and morphine. However, it's around 100 times more potent and therefore highly addictive. This chart shows the number of recorded deaths by overdose in the USA from 2001 through to 2022. And the scale on the left-hand side of this chart shows the number of deaths and goes from zero at the bottom to 70,000 at the top. And the four different colored lines show the number of deaths as a result of four different drugs. The dark red lines show the number of deaths as a result of heroin overdoses, which peaked in 2016 at just over 15,000. And in 2022 resulted in the lowest number of deaths at just under 6,000. The orange line shows the deaths from natural and semi-synthetic opioids, which represented the third highest category in 2022 at just under 12,000 deaths. The blue line shows the number of deaths from cocaine overdoses, and in 2022 this was the second highest recorded category, with just under 28,000 deaths. And the lighter red line shows the number of deaths as a result of fentanyl use. And what this shows is that in 2013, the number of deaths from fentanyl use was actually the lowest out of the four categories, at around 3,000. However, over the past 10 years, the number of deaths have skyrocketed. And in 2022, just under 75,000 people died as a result of fentanyl overdoses. So there is no doubt that there is a major fentanyl problem going on in the USA right now. 
And the USA authorities have identified China as the source for the vast majority of this fentanyl. That's where it's being produced. And of course, the two biggest borders that the USA has are with Canada, which is over 5,000 miles long. It's actually the longest single land border in the world between any two countries. And also with Mexico, which is around 1,900 miles long. So Donald Trump is basically saying that he's blaming China, Canada and Mexico for the fentanyl problem in the USA. And as a result, he's now applying these additional tariffs. So what are the potential implications of the announcement of these tariffs on the economies of Canada, China and Mexico? This chart produced by Statistics Canada shows the level of trade between the USA and Canada between 2009 and 2023. The scale on the left-hand side of this chart is shown in millions of Canadian dollars and goes from zero at the bottom to 700 billion at the top. The light blue bar charts show the value of exports from Canada to the USA. The dark blue bars show the imports from the USA to Canada and the red line across the bottom shows the balance of trade. And what this chart shows is that over the past 14 years, there has been a constant and steady increase in the value of exports and imports between the USA and Canada. Apart from in 2020, obviously, when the world slowed down as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. And in 2023, the total value of exports from Canada to the USA was 592 billion Canadian dollars, which is around 422 billion US dollars. And Canada imported 484 billion Canadian dollars, which equates to around 345 billion US dollars. And what those statistics mean in terms of the total volume of trade is that 78% of all of Canada's exports went directly to the USA. So you can see that Canada has a huge exposure to all of those exports. However, as we saw, it's also importing large volumes of goods directly from the US. So from the US's point of view, there is also some risk because it's not just that they're buying things from Canada and therefore they can slap a tariff on and have no consequences for the USA. There will be consequences because if Canada decides that it's also going to apply tariffs against all of the things it's importing from the US, then that means that those US exporters will also be impacted. This chart shows the breakdown by country of China's exports in 2023. And as you can see, the USA represents the biggest single market, accounting for 15% by value of all of China's exports. And in monetary terms, that equated to 501 billion US dollars. And if we look at the same breakdown for China's imports, you can see that the USA is also China's largest trading partner. But in relative terms, the exposure is lower. The USA only accounts for 7% of China's imports. And in monetary terms, that equated in 2023 to $165 billion. And this chart shows the breakdown of Mexico's exports by country. And as you can see, it is dominated by the United States. More than 80% of all of Mexico's exports go directly to the US. And the biggest single category is manufactured goods, including vehicles and electrical goods. And in monetary terms in 2023, those exports equated to 475 billion US dollars. And the breakdown for imports show that Mexico also has huge exposure to the USA. However, in percentage terms, it's far lower, only being 45%. And in monetary terms in 2023, that equated to $255 billion. So in terms of looking at the overall position, in 2023, Mexico, China and Canada combined exported goods to the value of $1.6 trillion US dollars. However, they also imported goods from the USA of $900 billion. So there was a trade deficit of around $700 billion in the US's favour, but those countries are still buying lots of goods from the USA. So if Donald Trump follows through and applies tariffs on all of these different countries and they reciprocate by applying tariffs on US goods, all of the companies that are exporting to China, Canada and Mexico will suffer because their prices will go up and therefore, it's likely that the demand for those products will fall, the sales will fall and the profitability of those companies will also drop. Now, in terms of evaluating the direct impact on the economies of the USA, China, Canada and Mexico of this trade war, the biggest single influence will be on prices and inflation. 
If the US does apply tariffs on all of these goods, the $1.6 trillion worth of goods that they're importing, then that means that the price of all of those imports will rise. They will be more expensive for US consumers to buy. And so that's likely to push up inflation because as prices rise, then we see inflation going up. Now, in terms of what the Fed will do about that, the main thing that they can do is adjust interest rates. So if we see rising inflation, as we've seen across the globe over the last three or four years, the reaction is likely to be an increase in interest rates, as we saw the Fed doing following the COVID-19 pandemic and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And if interest rates go up, that increases the cost of borrowing for both companies and individuals. And we will potentially see a reduction in the growth of the US economy, because if you increase borrowing costs, companies tend to borrow less. Therefore, they're not investing as much into their businesses. And so they'll grow at a slower rate. People will be more reluctant to take on mortgages, buy property, take on loans to buy things. And so the spending will generally go down. And this will lead to a contraction in the US economy and an increase in prices. And equally, if we think about the other three countries involved here, if they apply tariffs on US imports as a result of their goods being tariffed, then that will increase the price of all of those imports and therefore increase prices and push up inflation and potentially interest rates. But also the companies that are exporting to the US at the moment will see a reduction in their sales because their goods will be more expensive. Therefore, they're likely to sell less. And so those companies will produce less profit and therefore the economies will slow down. So the bottom line impact here is that this trade war is potentially really bad news for all four of these economies. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think it's really interesting that despite the fact that Donald Trump hasn't actually taken over as president, he doesn't do so until the end of January 2025, he's already having a major influence on both the trade between the USA and some of its major trading partners and also on the financial markets. We've seen stock markets actually being affected as a direct result of the posts that he's launched onto his media site. And the reason that everybody is concerned is that he's come out and said that he's going to slap an outright tariff on every single good that's imported from Mexico, Canada and China until the war against drugs is sorted in the USA. Now, realistically, is that going to happen? Are China, Mexico and Canada going to be able to stop the import of all the fentanyl into the USA? Well, maybe they can. Maybe they can change the way they're managing the borders. Maybe China can crack down on these labs that are producing these drugs. But the war against drugs globally has been going on for a very long time. It's something that's really difficult to break. So it's unlikely, I think, that we're going to see overnight results. We're not going to see all of the drug use in the USA suddenly stopping within a couple of days of Donald Trump taking over. So if he does follow through with this threat, we will see these tariffs being applied carte blanche against all of the different goods that are being imported from the three main trading partners that the USA is dealing with. And when you're talking about $1.6 trillion worth of goods, that is a lot of things that are going to rise in price. And as we talked about earlier in the video, that's going to affect US consumers because they're going to see prices rising. That's going to push up inflation. They'll have less money left at the end of each month if they're still buying the same things because certain products will have gone up either 25% or 10%. But equally, it will cause problems for the USA if those three countries also apply tariffs against US imports as a direct retaliation because the companies who are exporting to their biggest trading partners, which is probably most of the companies in the USA, are exporting things to Canada and Mexico, they're going to see their sales fall, they're going to see their profitability falling, and therefore they're going to contribute less to the economy. And so we'll see a slowdown in the US economy, as we'll also see a slowdown in Canada, Mexico and China. So the overall summary of today's video is that whilst Donald Trump is trying to make a point in terms of his war on drugs, I think the way that he's gone about it is quite blunt. It's worrying the financial markets. It's worrying people in Canada, Mexico and China and probably in the USA as well. And if he follows through on this threat, 
we could potentially see inflation spiking back up again in the US and Canada and Mexico and China, and therefore it will have a negative impact on the long-term growth of the economy. So it'll be interesting to see whether he does follow through on this or whether there are subsequent posts. But I wanted to post today because I thought it was an interesting topic. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you found it useful, informative and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.